Pietro, thank you for being here with me today. It's a pleasure. In a few words, how would you describe Algorand? Sure. Algorand is uh, a layer one blockchain protocol uh, funded by Professor Silvio Michali, who's Turing Award for having invented some of the primitives of modern cryptography, like uh, zero knowledge proof, for which he had the Turing Award, uh, like uh, probabilistic encryption uh, and the verifiable random functions that are used as uh, a cryptographic primitive at the core of the consensus mechanism of Algorand. So we are an alternative uh, to other blockchain protocols like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and so on and so forth. And how exactly does it differ from other blockchains? We have a different consensus mechanism, uh, again, uh, that is based on this cryptographic sortition that uh, the very viable random function represent. And we have a different uh, architecture when it comes to the smart contract logic. These are the two main pillars of differentiation that we have in terms of technology. On one end, uh, the consensus mechanism being based on a random function, like the verifiable random function, which again is a sort of lottery that selects who are going to be the validators of the next round, increases both the scalability and the security of the blockchain protocol while remaining completely decentralized. Each owner of an algo that is online participates to this cryptographic uh, uh, sortition, and when he is selected to validate the next block uh, in the chain, well, he in the same message has to deliver if he validates or doesn't validate uh, the next block. This increases the security because uh, the randomness uh, uh, plays a role. A malicious attacker doesn't know who to attack uh, before it's too late, right? And at the same time, it increases scalability because uh, this function is very succinct, the message is very succinct, can be broadcasted in 4.4 seconds uh, to the whole network, to the whole world. So, Strong scalability, strong security, while remaining decentralized. So you solve the blockchain triple lemma in a way. Exactly, and that's uh, the, the the main purpose, right? So blockchain is a great invention. It uh, allows, since the onset, uh, the idea of representing value in the digital age. Digital age is a fantastic time, right? Everything can be a string of zeros and ones, and you can send this string of zeros and ones from one side of the world to the other virtually in no time. But you have a problem with value, because value and uh, uh, its own uniqueness, authenticity, scarcity, doesn't lend itself well with the logic where you can copy-paste. The blockchain kicks in and then allows by a combination of uh, cryptography, information technology, uh, game theory for incentives, uh, to avoid double spending by design. Fantastic. But then you have to combine the characteristics of every infrastructure, it's not just blockchain, right? Scalability, the accessibility, the centralized accessibility to the infrastructure, and the security, that in our case is cryptographical security. So again, what we try to do is to create uh, an infrastructure that works, and our one works, we are up and running since two and a half years with zero downtime, uh, for the exchange, the representation and the exchange of value in the digital age. And how do you plan on bolstering interoperability between blockchains? Absolutely. Without uh, an inter interoperability logic, uh, every blockchain would be a silos, right? And therefore, it will not represent uh, a widely adoptable infrastructure. Interoperability in our design has to remain, though, decentralized, has to rest on uh, the very ethos of what blockchain is, so a decentralized ecosystem, a decentralized infrastructure. And our solution is uh, compact certificates that allow uh, not only to represent with uh, quantum resistance signatures uh, the events on the chain, but also the status of the chain. This essentially will become the brick of the centralized token bridges that therefore that do not require any other trust than the trust that you already have if you want to bring your own uh, asset from chain A to chain B, you are already trusting the consensus mechanism of chain A and chain B. You don't need to trust any other intermediary because you can rest on decentralized to can bridge logic. Right? This to us, uh, and again, the, 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 the state proofs uh, compass certificate uh, innovation is something that can be used in Algorand but also in other uh, blockchains, to us this is the primitive for interoperability. And recently, TravelX and Aero Europa launched the first plane ticket NFT on the Algorand blockchain. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about your approach to NFTs? Yeah, I think it's uh, a little bit uh, mm, a testament of our approach uh, uh, 
uh, in the blockchain world at large, we want to do real things, right? We want to go a little bit beyond uh, the uh, ups and downs and the fashion and the, 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 uh, no, the, the short-term interest of uh, a world like NFT, metaverse, and so on and so forth. We want to do real things. Like in this case, actually, we solve a specific problem with the tokenization of uh, uh, air tickets. Uh, as we did, for instance, in other use cases, uh, uh, the biggest amount of uh, uh, non-fungible tokens on Algorand uh, as of today have been those issued by the Italian Copyright Collection Agency, CIA, to represent uh, the uh, copyrights of around uh, 100,000 uh, musicians uh, in, in Italy, right? We've been using uh, uh, the blockchain to represent uh, the Green Pass uh, uh, in a non-falsifiable manner for uh, Colombia and Peru. Uh, we have a set of use cases where NFTs are actually for real. I can mention another one, which is uh, the one of Uranet with uh, Italia Olivicola, which is a consortium for the traceability of uh, olive oil in order to avoid uh, uh, the, the tampering of, uh, and let's say, the falsification of the formula of the olive oil, right? And they do traceability uh, of the authenticity of their own processes through an NFT type of logic. So, again, we want to do real things. And between the centralized and decentralized institution, how do you think the financial world is going to evolve in the next few years? Sure. I mean, uh, it's interesting. I mean, I think yesterday or the day before, uh, Janet Yellen gave a speech uh, uh, at a university event uh, mentioning the fact that uh, in the digital age, uh, an element of decentralization is needed in order to make the infrastructure more resilient, right? And I think Janet Yellen had said different things uh, in, in the past, right? So I think there is a maturity that is uh, uh, happening uh, in the institutional world on the fact that uh, the decentralized infrastructure can help finance to unleash value. When you minimize the counterparty risk because you are able to do truly atomic transactions on a blockchain, you can free up capital. Uh, when you avoid putting centralized databases in series with a notary and intermediary in between, you can lower the intermediation fees and therefore unleash capital for other uses. So I think that there is a, a sort of a, um, process of convergence between uh, the centralized traditional world and the decentralized infrastructure. Uh, central bank digital currencies, for instance, uh, are often studied based on blockchain protocols, simply because blockchain solved the single point of failure problem, which is an infrastructure problem. It's not an institutional type of problem. So the institution can keep on playing its role and rest uh, on a more uh, robust type of infrastructure. It's the same thing when, I mean, when the police has to chase thieves. Are they going to use a proprietary infrastructure? So going from, I don't know, Brittany to Paris uh, in order to find the, the, the thieves that are uh, based in Bordeaux, or are they going to use the decentralized motorway infrastructure to better chase the thieves? It's a little bit the same thing. And what do you expect from events such as the Paris Blockchain Week Summit? Well, uh, listen, I would say a couple of things. First of all, of course, networking, visibility, right? A uh, sort of, let me say, uh, marketing gain. But at the same time, also, uh, the fact that we want to reiterate our commitment to, to the, uh, c the central place uh, of uh, uh, France and Paris uh, within Europe. We are, by definition, a global infrastructure. Blockchain has to be global. Uh, at the same time, we are very aware of uh, the projects that are happening uh, locally, uh, be it uh, in Asia, in Europe, in the US, uh, and we want to accompany locally uh, those that are developing. So again, a sign of commitment from our end. And what are your plans uh, for Algorands for 2022 and beyond? Sure. Well. From the technological standpoint, I would say that uh, the big innovations are going to be, on one hand, state proofs. Uh, so the Compass Certificate Lodge that I mentioned before is going to be issued uh, pretty soon. Uh, secondly, I would say that there will be a delivery of uh, the new code that is going to be essentially uh, helping the increase of scalability. Uh, we do, as of today, 
1,200, 1,200 uh, transactions per second is going to go up for a factor of 10 uh, before the end of the year. And so there will be innovation, if you want, from the technological standpoint. When it comes uh, in terms of, uh, of business, uh, I would say that uh, we are going ahead in the direction of decentralizing our approach with different legal entities uh, around the world, and uh, as well with the decentralized governance that uh, uh, is already in place. So there is now the third round of uh, votes uh, on the decentralized governance logic. So these are both on the technological aspect, uh, on uh, the business aspect, uh, and on the governance aspect, uh, the main pillars of evolution for 2022. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure.